Protectors of the Sunna. Sunna Baba. Protector of the Sunna. Email alhamdulillah, wassalam, wassalam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of Sunnah Followers Hadith class. And this is the class wherein we discuss hadiths that pertain to women in Islam or issues uh, from the Sunnah that pertain to women in Islam. And again, we're using the book uh, uh, compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli entitled 200 Hadiths for Muslim Women. For those of you who don't have a copy of this book, I really strongly encourage you to go and purchase a copy of it. Uh, he's having a 20% off sale right now. Uh, go to his uh, website at atleyonline.com, atleyonline.com, all one word, A-D-L-Y-O-N-L-I-N-E.com. Okay, and purchase this book. And the, he has other, many other great books that he's put together about various different hadiths and different topics of Akita that every Muslim uh, should be aware of. So uh, let's take a look at the hadith uh, that we will uh, be discussing for today. Let me put the hadith up on the screen for us to review. And again, what is the source? The source of this hadith is Sahih Bukhari. Again, the source of this hadith is Sahih Bukhari, and it's narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar. He said that um, a man stood up and said, um, and asked a question one day. He said, O Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what clothing uh, may be worn uh, when a person is making Hajj and in the state of Ihram? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, uh, as a man, you cannot wear a shirt, nor can you wear pants, nor can you wear anything over your head, meaning no turban, no skull cap or any of that. He said, also, you cannot wear a hoodie. You cannot wear a hooded cloak. He said, but if you have no shoes, you can wear the leather stockings as long as they are cut off at the ankles. He said also, as a man, you cannot wear any perfume. And as reg in regards to the woman who was making Hajj, when a woman is in, in the state of Ihram, then she cannot cover her face, nor can she wear gloves. Now, this hadith brings about a lot of information to us as Muslims today. Number one, it tells us what a man can not wear when making Hajj. You know, as you know, men dress in the traditional clothing, the white garments, okay? Uh, no shirt, no pants, nothing to cover their head. Uh, they can wear shoes or uh, leather uh, stockings, okay? They can, but no perfume. And also the second good thing that you learn from this Hadith is once again, covering the face. Covering the face of a woman is not an obligation, nor is it an obligation for a woman to cover her hands. Because if it were an obligation for us Muslim women to cover our face and hands, Allah would never demand that we uncover them during the most sacred time or, uh, or during the most sacred act of worship we can do, okay? So this is what we use also as that proof, okay? And I, we talked about covering the face and hands before in a previous hadith. Uh, uh, not all the women covered their faces and hands, and even the prophet's wives didn't do it all the time. They covered their face sometimes, but not all the time. We discussed the hadith, whereas a woman came with a letter to give a letter to the prophet and uh, she did, uh, and the prophet looked at her hand and said he didn't know if it was the hand of a woman or a man. And he told her, and she said, I'm a woman. He said, then why don't you paint your nails? 
paint your nails to show that you are a woman. So that authentic Hadith also uh, we talked about is a proof that a woman doesn't have to, co uh, to cover her hands. And then in this case, the face. And we've already discussed how uh, all of the companions, out of all the companions, every single one of them except for Ibn Masood, all agreed that the woman's face and the woman's hands is not part of her nakedness. And they all agreed, except for Ibn, uh, Ibn Masood, that uh, not only can a woman show her face, not only can she show her hands, but she can show any decorations or any makeup or jewelry that she put on both. So this hadith serves uh, several uh, 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 purposes. It, it serves a purpose of telling us, you know, how to dress when we are in a state of ihram. And also, again, women do not have to cover their face. You know, in fact, we are required to uncover your face, you know, and your hands when you're making Hajj. And Hajj is one of the most uh, 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 um, uh, strongest acts of worship that we can do. So now that we've discussed this hadith, who would like to uh, comment on it? Go ahead. The floor is yours. And by the way, I noticed lately, uh, since we've been uh, joined uh, by uh, other uh, shu, shu or people of knowledge, that a lot of you here who used to get on the mic and put your two cents in, you haven't been doing it. What is it? Are you people afraid of something? What are you afraid of? That's one thing. Well, I'm, I'm going to rest as you assured today that the shuk are busy today. So let's get on the mic and discuss this hadith. Anyone? Well, they come soon. You know, that's really good information to know. And it's proof that you don't, just like what you said, I'm just kind of mimicking what you said. It was clear. Uh, it's proof that you don't have to cover your face and you don't have to cover your hands. And in the Quran, it say everything except your face and hands anyway. I don't know who said they had to cover their face and hands, but that's very clear. Exactly. Um, exactly. It's very clear, you know. And again, where does these misconceptions come from? I don't know. Uh, uneducated people uh, in our religion, uh, people who like to put themselves forward in the presence of a law. And one of the things that I teach you guys is if something is not clear, if something is not clear through the Quran or the authentic Hadith, then we look to see what the companions had to say. Okay, and like I said, all the companions except for Ibn Masood have agreed on this issue that when Allah says in the Quran, uh, except what naturally appears thereof, that that verse is in re reference to the woman's face, hands, and any makeup or decorations that she put on them. And, you know, no women were more beautiful than the Arabic women. You know, the Arabic women love to beautify themselves and decorate themselves just like the Greek women did, just like the Roman women did, just like the Persian women did, just like the Indian women did. You know, this women have been beautiful. It's the nature of the woman to want to beautify herself. Allah tells us in the Quran that the purpose of clothing is to cover your nakedness and to adorn and beautify yourself. So again, you know, these misconceptions come from uh, uneducated uh, uh, men and women amongst us. And that's why it is so careful as Muslims that we uh, are cautious as to who we take our knowledge of Islam from. If they are not giving you the clear evidence, the clear evidence is derived from the Quran or the authentic Hadith. And when it comes to things that are not defined clearly, if they don't give you what the companions had to say, then you need to walk away. Okay, go ahead, Sister Aisha. Okay. Uh, Aisha. Your is black. Okay, try it again. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you, but it was lagging. Try it again. Go ahead. Okay, I was saying um, that, Alhamdulillah, you explained this really well. And uh, if I ever um, go to Hajj, uh, I, I, I'm going to learn the rules before I go there because, 
you know, many men and women, they just go to Hajj and they don't know the exception you have to have. They don't know, like, the rules that you have to, uh, like, you explain all the rules. So before, you know, you put yourself into that situation, you know, learn what you have, what's expected of you before you go there. So you don't be going there and having, you know, not having the full, like, what's called full blessing of, like, you know, the Hajj. That's all I have to say. Yeah. And one thing too, when you make Hodge, you don't really have to worry so much about that because you make Hodge with a Hodge guy. Whenever we make Hodge, there's a guy, you have to have a leader, a Hodge guy, a Hodge leader. And that Hodge leader will make sure that he, uh, to remind you of the rules and to remind you of what you're supposed to be doing uh, during each step. So, you know, basically if you're going to make Hodge and you're with a, uh, your leader will let you know if you are a female that you cannot cover your face nor your hands uh, when you're in the state of Ikram, they'll let it be known. I remember when I made Hodge, the group leader we had, he let it be known to all the women there too. You sisters have to remove your niqabs and your gloves and all of that, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, the state of Ikram. So they'll explain that to you. And they'll also explain to you uh, what you're supposed to be doing in each uh, uh, during the way in each uh, event and all that too. So that won't be a problem. But like she said, it's good to educate yourself ahead of time to, so you know what's expected of yourself. Uh, thank you for sharing it. Anyone else would like to comment? And again, this is the hadith wherein the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forbidden men to wear shirts, pants, or even cover their head or wear a perfume when they are in the state of ihram doing hajj. And for the Muslim women, we can wear anything we want to. There is no certain color or no certain dress as long as our body is covered and our skin is covered. And when we enter into the state of ihram, we have to remove our, uh, make sure our face is not covered and our hands. Anyone else would like to share? Any other comments? Okay, well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session of our Hadith class. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik.